Hi and welcome to Heat Software's short video series on endpoint security. I'm Rob Kelsall and I'm joined by my colleague Rene Gonzalez and in this session we're going to be covering application control. So Rene, when I first started in IT security, maybe back in 2000, I was actually looking at application whitelisting from a customer perspective and, and back then it was very difficult to try and identify not just the applications that were installed, i.e. from a license management tool, but the actual underlying executables and DLLs that ultimately would be added to the whitelist. I remember that task being really difficult. Could you start off by showing us how Heat Software has solved that problem for customers? Absolutely. Um, so basically what you're gonna do first is group your computers uh, based on class, geography, workstation, um, workload. And then under manage application control policies, before you start locking down machines, first you want to identify what applications are running. And you can easily create what we call policies. Now there's two main policies of enforcement, actually three. Um, we're going to focus on, actually we can talk about all of them. So before you start locking down machines, the first thing you want to do is click or create a new policy called Easy Auditor. Now Easy Auditor simply is just going to create the initial whitelist on each machine and then a copy of that whitelist is going to be sent to the server to process so you can query later. So what you're going to do here is create the policy, assign it to your individual machines or assign it to your group of machines. So once you assign that policy to that group, let me pick on my Windows desktops as an example. So once that policy gets assigned, um, the module has to scan the machine, create the initial whitelist, and we also scrape the metadata on each file that's going to request memory or a portable executable. And then what we can do now is visit the application library. And with the application library, now you can leverage keyword searches to identify the different applications that have been detected within the enterprise by your application control module. Sounds good, Rene. I guess when I was looking at this from a customer's perspective, we were really focused on what applications we would add to the whitelist. But I can see in here, you know, we might see just in the audit applications that we don't want. You know, maybe file sharing applications, not necessarily a virus, but something we just don't want to run. Can we prevent those from running before moving into lockdown? Absolutely. So that's called a denied application policy. And basically what you can do is leverage keyword searches in the application library like Pope as an example to identify different poker applications that have been detected by the application control module. And what you can do here is expand the detail of the different files to identify or make a decision if you want to trust this application or if you want to deny it or block it. So in this particular example, I found a couple of files regarding party poker. Right? I found an installer, I found the main executable, and I found the DLL. So what I can do is simply block party poker from being run by selecting all these files and hitting the deny application policy. Now what's going to happen is a new dialog window is going to pop up. Let me try this one more time. Now you can create a new policy or add it to an existing policy. In my particular example, I created a policy already called banned software applications. And all you have to do is assign it to the policy and any machine or any group of machines that have that banned software policy that includes blocking or denying party poker, the next time the user tries to launch party poker, it's going to get denied and that denied pop-up dialog box can be customized to notify the end user that they're not allowed to install software without IT's permission or consent. And you can even include a custom hyperlink to have the end user justify the need of any software application by using any type of web-based ticketing system. We prefer to use our heat service desk ticketing system. That way it can go through the whole change control process from requesting the software, have IT or their manager approve it, and then once that software is approved, then you whitelist it, and now that user can install or run Party Poker or any different application that is not on the whitelist. 
Thanks, Ronnie. I think that the denied applications policy is a great way for customers to get started with app control you know, before necessarily going into full lockdown mode. Yeah, another key thing that I forgot to mention is you don't need to assign an easy lockdown or an easy audit policy. I'm going to go into detail later on the difference between the two. But just by having the module installed, you can deny any policy that was discovered by our solution. That way it gets blocked with no enforcement policies assigned. So it's, it's a good way to quickly get started. And also it's a good way to educate your end users that there's changes coming. And one of those changes are that you're not allowed to install software without IT's permission or consent. And you have to justify the need for that software. And this is how you're going to do it going forward. Great. Thanks, Rene. And thanks for joining us on this session on application control. We'll look forward to seeing you on a future session.